skills like uh, memory, imagination, planning, reinforcement learning. These are all things that are known about how the brain does it. And we wanted to replicate some of that uh, in our AI system. Something truly revolutionary just happened in the AI world. And no, it didn't come from OpenAI or Google. A small startup from Singapore called Sapien has introduced a new AI agent called HRM, and it might just be the most important development in artificial intelligence we've seen in years. Not because it's bigger, not because it's trained on more data, but because it's built smarter. And somehow this brain-inspired architecture is outthinking models more than four times its size. Now let's get one thing straight. This isn't your typical tiny model beats GPT headline. HRM is not a simplified language model, not a downsized transformer, and definitely not a leaner version of ChatGPT. It's something entirely different. Massive models like GPT-4 or Claude process problems linearly, rely on something called chain of thought prompting. Basically, it is like the artificial intelligence is talking itself through a math problem step by step. Sounds clever, and sometimes it works. But the thing is, if the artificial intelligence makes just one mistake in that chain, the whole answer can fall apart. But HRM takes a completely different route. It thinks in loops, literally. It mimics the human brain, literally borrows the brain's layered decision-making strategy and applies it to artificial intelligence reasoning. It reasons more like a human, by thinking strategically and then executing rapidly. To put that in context, HRM has just 27 million parameters. For reference, GPT-1 had over 117 million. Yet HRM outperforms OpenAI's O3 Mini, High, and Claude 3.7 on Arc AGI, the go-to benchmark for reasoning intelligence. So how is that even possible? The secret is structure. HRM is built around two modules, a high-level planner and a low-level worker. Think of it like a CEO and an employee. The planner is like the slow, strategic brain. It maps out the big picture, tries to figure out what kind of problem it is facing. The worker is the fast processor. It takes orders and does the actual work, quickly and efficiently. Think of it like a chess master planning a strategy and an assistant executing the moves instantly. These two parts loop through each other. The high-level module makes a plan. The low-level module carries it out and sends back results. Then the high-level updates based on what happened. But what makes HRM even more interesting is how it learns. This constant back and forth creates a feedback loop that lets the model refine its reasoning mid-process. Traditional models use something called backpropagation through time. It's like reviewing every move in a 100-step chess game just to find the one that messed it up. HRM doesn't do that. It focuses on the final state. Then it loops, iterating until earlier mistakes surface and get corrected naturally. It learns faster because it learns smarter and the results are pretty insane. The ARC AGI benchmark, basically an intelligence quotient test for artificial intelligence, if for question. HRM scored 40.3%. That is above Claude 3.7's 21.2% and OpenAI's O3 Mini High model, which got 34.5%. These are not small differences. This is a tiny model running on one graphics processing unit, beating out some of the biggest names in the game when it comes to raw reasoning. Even more impressive, HRM doesn't need massive pre-training. It learned to solve pro-level Sudoku puzzles, even when it's hard and extreme levels. It solved 55% of them. You want to guess how Claude or OpenAI's models did? 0%. Not a single one. And then there's the maze challenge 30 x 30 grids. HRM found the optimal path in 74.5% of the tests. The others, again, zero. All this, and the model was trained with just 1,000 examples per task. No massive internet data sets. No months-long pre-training. Guan Wang, one of the minds behind HRM, said you could train it to pro-level Sudoku in two graphics processing unit hours. That is not just efficient. That is ridiculous. But there's more to this than just performance on benchmarks. The way HRM is built solves some deeper problems that current transformer models face. Let's take a step back. Transformer-based large language models like GPT or Claude work by processing a set number of steps for each output token. They always do the same amount of thinking, regardless of how hard the question is. They can't say, hey, this is a tough one, let me think longer. They do not have the ability to go back, rethink, or rewrite their output once it starts coming out. Once they generate a token, they are locked into it. It is like trying to solve a math problem by writing down one number at a time in pen, without ever checking if you are on the right track. HRM breaks away from that limitation. Its two-level architecture lets it adapt the amount of reasoning based on the complexity of the problem. In fact, there is even a version of HRM that uses reinforcement learning to decide on its own how many iterations it needs for each task. So for simple tasks, it might only loop a few times. 
For harder ones, it loops more. This makes it way closer to actual flexible thinking than anything else we have seen. And because of how it's structured, it also avoids one of the biggest issues in artificial intelligence training today, deep backpropagation through time. Most models need to remember and synchronize partial derivatives across multiple layers and time steps. It is memory intensive, it is slow. And it is probably not how biological brains actually work. HRM, on the other hand, uses more local gradient updates, which are easier to compute and way more biologically plausible. Now, does that matter in practice? Absolutely. Less memory required means you can run more models at once or train faster with fewer resources. It also means this thing scales really well. You could run HRM on a laptop or even embed it into edge devices or robots. And that is exactly what Sapien is doing. They are already testing HRM in healthcare to help diagnose rare diseases and in seasonal climate forecasting where it reportedly hit accuracy rates of 97%. The startup's team includes former engineers from DeepMind, Anthropic, DeepSeek, and even Elon Musk's XAI group. These are people who have worked at the cutting edge of artificial intelligence, and they are all betting on HRM's brain-inspired design to eventually push past the limits of what we've come to expect from large language models. And yeah, they're not shy about it. Guan Wang straight up said, Artificial general intelligence is about giving machines human-level intelligence and eventually beyond. Chain of thought prompting is just a shortcut. What we have built is something that can think. That kind of confidence usually comes from people trying to sell you hype, but in this case, the results are backing it up. And you don't have to just take their word for it either. The entire project is open source. You can check it out yourself right now on GitHub. Train your own version, modify it, see how it works. That level of transparency is pretty rare, especially for something this promising. Now sure, it's early days. HRM still has a narrow focus. It's built to reason, not to chat. Don't expect it to write poetry or summarize your emails. But as a proof of concept, it is one of the strongest we've seen. And HRM is not alone. There are other architectural breakthroughs being explored. Sakana is working on continuous thought machines. There are bit-level language models that only use one-bit weights. Even Google is testing out diffusion-based reasoning models. All of these are still in the experimental phase. But they are part of the same trend rethinking how artificial intelligence should actually work, instead of just making it bigger. What is different here is that HRM is already working. It is already beating models four times its size using just a tiny sliver of training data with no pre-training at all. It is not just theory anymore. And honestly, unless someone suddenly throws a few billion into building a new foundational model from scratch, the next big artificial intelligence leap probably won't be another scaled-up GPT clone. It will be something like this, a totally new architecture that brings better reasoning, faster training, and cheaper deployment without needing a warehouse full of GPUs. If HRM's path continues, it could be the first step toward a world where artificial intelligence agents don't live in data centers. They live in your laptop, in your robot, or even in your car. And they won't just be parsing the internet, they will actually be thinking. So what do you think? Is HRM the real future of artificial intelligence? Or just another niche tool with a good demo? Let us know what you think in the comments. And if you want more deep dives into the wild frontiers of AI, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.